Uh, what I want to cover today with you guys um, is kind of what our defensive philosophy is, what's worked for us um, the past three years. Um, uh, what we do a little bit as far as position drills, hope you can get something out of that. Um, and kind of what we do as a weekly prep. Um, starting from Saturday, uh, once the week gets, the previous week gets done, all the way until Friday night um, for that game day that evening. Um, so a little bit of what we do. We are 50 front. Um, our kind of, our main thought is, our goal is to stop the run. Just like Xavier coach had said, um, we want to make teams as one dimensional as we can um, by stopping the run and controlling the line of scrimmage. Um, we've been pretty fortunate the past few years to have some good ass kickers up front. Um, usually that's the one position group where we try to eliminate as much of two-way players as possible. I know Coach uh, Berg and I, we kind of sit down, okay, who's your starting five? Who's my starting five going to be on the front five? And where can we rest those guys the most? Um, we're, we're not huge. What was our role last year, guys? 400? 406. 406. We had how many varsity players? 71. Varsity? Varsity. Yeah, varsity. 40. 40. So we had a lot of guys playing both ways. Um, so usually those front five is where we try to get some rest because they're banging heads every single time. Um, and the staples that we've always put together and uh, get a mindset with from day one is we stress we want our defense to be fast, mentally and physically, extremely physical, um, and insanely disciplined. Um, and we'll, I'll kind of touch on that as how we get those up um, throughout the season. Um, our result has kind of been there the past three years. We've had some pretty good success. Now, not going to lie, we've had some damn good football players. All right? Um, 2014, uh, we were in Dunn St. Croix still at that point, I believe. Weren't we? with you guys still. Um, lost in level three, um, gave up 14 points per game. Um, lost in level three to eventual state champs uh, in Somerset, 28-14 uh, in third place. 2015, um, probably, in my mind, the best defense we had. Um, and the first year in the middle order, um, both losses were the same team. Uh, lost to Osceola in <coughs> level three. Um, essentially, uh, uh, in, uh, we didn't convert based on Hail Mary the last play of the game. Could have probably sent in lower time. Uh, probably could use Rogers with the same day. Um, and then last year, uh, we had to replace a lot. Um, basically, to win our last regular season game to even make the playoffs. Um, struggled with things here and there. And we were able to fight out a, um, a playoff run. We got fortunate enough to finish down at the camp. But uh, for us, uh, the 16.5 um, gave them too many points in the second half in a lot of games is what it came down to for us. Um, and actually, we've been going back to film already and trying to figure out where our mistakes were um, with what we had. Um, so go ahead. Um, I hate to say it, I'm biased. Defense wins titles. And controlling the ball for damn near over the entire game. Um, if you look at the seven teams that won titles last year, you break it down, they combined for 14.25 points per game in the postseason. Okay? If they can't score, your odds are pretty good you're going to win. All right? And we only, we, our goal is two touchdowns. 13 points is the goal we set each week. They don't get more than 13. Okay, they do score twice, but we better block one of the PATs and not let them convert if they're going for two. Okay? We preach it all the time. The second thing we preach constantly to them is you've got to create turnovers. If we can create turnovers, that's another positive thing for us. Not only third turnovers, um, through interceptions, fumbles, punt blocks, um, three and outs, we consider a three and out turnover um, because we're getting the ball, or not three and out, um, yeah, three and out, or even forcing them fourth down. Um, we want to get that ball back. If they can't get the ball, I know Berg and our offense is going to control it with our option game. We're going to run the clock down, we're going to wear things down, we're going to be okay. All right? Um, so, our main philosophy, like I said, we're fast, we're physical, we're disciplined. Um, Talking a little bit, we are a 50 front. I should have mentioned this earlier. We are a strictly man-to-man -man team. Um, our defensive backs are most of our basketball players. Um, we are man-to-man -man all over the field. Um, I tell them, if your kid goes to the bathroom, you're going to wash his hands with him when he's done. All right, you are everywhere he goes the entire game. Um, we tried to dabble with some zone my first year. It just turned into trying to mix the zone man-to-man -man concepts for our kids. It was too tough. 
consider we don't get a bunch of time with them because they do play both sides of the ball. Um, and we'll talk about how we put man to man stuff. Go All right, fast. I look at it two ways. I want my players to be physically fast and they gotta be mentally fast. If they don't know where to go, I don't care if you can run a 4.540, you're running the wrong direction. Okay, if you don't know where your read is and where you're supposed to go. All right? We do pursuit drills a couple different ways. The good old fashioned rabbit, all right? We try to take advantage of our time as much as possible. So I'll draw, um, we'll have simple play cards. So we'll have five cans, the five linemen, and I'll have a group of six guys come out. They'll line up in a formation. Our defense has to line up appropriately, get in the right spot, snap it, hit the rabbit, go, go run them down, okay? So we're, we're getting formation adjustments at the same time. Assignment and alignment. Are you in the right spot? If you're not in the right spot to snap, you might as well even play that snap. Okay. We do 10 tackles to the uprights. I've never seen kids fight so hard to tackle a bag. We'll set 10 bags up down the sideline, tackle all 10 bags. If you don't get a bag, you got to go run and touch the uprights. Okay. I've never seen two D tackles, dumb and dumber pretty much, mid Madison, because they know they're fighting for that 10th bag. Because if they don't get to that 10th bag, they know they ain't going to beat the DBs in the first nine. Never seen them fight so hard against that 10, because they know they got to go an extra 40 yards to go to the uprights. Um, we do double whistle during Team D. First whistle stops the play. You better be within the ball at the second whistle. All right? We're taking advantage of our team defense as much as we can. Limited time. Obviously, we only have so much time the WA allows us. We're going to take advantage of that time, get as much work out of them, get them running. A lot of times, if they're working their ass off in that team stuff, in that pursuit stuff, we don't have to do conditioning at the end of practice, or not as long, because we're getting our, we're getting our conditioning in during our team. Um, mentally fast. Like I talked about, <coughs> our kids, they got to know where to go. All right? Um, we watch more film than you probably should ever need to, okay? I made a joke with Tony this year. Um, I probably watch more film than anyone's supposed to. I refer to film as sex, okay? You can never get too much film, okay? And even if you get bad film, it's still pretty good, okay? During our playoff run, I had a lot of sex, okay? For those five weeks, all right? Our guys, we watch it with them. I usually get stuff going in the mornings. We watch practice. Um, I want them to know exactly what they're going to see on Friday night, and I want them to see it hundreds of times before they see it live in front of them. Um, again, taking advantage of time, we run two scout teams usually. Um, we take everyone possible. I know Berg usually has to run quarterback sometimes on the second scout team, um, or we'll have injured reserve guys run linemen on the second scout team. Our first scout team, um, in the playoff runs, uh, Coach DeSalvo even takes them during team any time, and he practices their plays. Okay, so they've practiced um, the spread read option. They've practiced the jet sweep because we don't run that in our offense, but their our scout team practices it. So when we come to team offense or team defense, they they know what they're doing. I'm not trying to sit back here and go, "What the hell? Why aren't you blocking this guy? Why aren't you running that? Where's our timing?" They're already ready to go. A couple of years ago, we played. Uh, Duran. Anyone know anything about Duran? <coughs> you guys, single wing, right? It's crazy to try to replicate. We actually had our scout team watching the film during the week on them. Okay, so they could learn what they were doing. We actually had a bet with our scout team that if we got to a running clock, we'd let them go out and run a couple plays on a Friday night. Um, we didn't quite get there. Uh, we run a formation group as well. So after the scout, the play group leaves. Formation group comes out right away, and we're just aligned to formations, okay? Because that second group, yeah, they could they run a play, but we're talking fourth and fifth string kids by then. <coughs> Am I really benefiting having my first string guys run a play against kids that can barely line up in the right spot? Absolutely not. But can I get a benefit out of them lining up and knowing where to get to? Absolutely. I hate to say it, some of those kids haven't even played football. I tell them to go line up as a tight end, I see like seven yard splits and the kid's standing up like this. I'll number them so they know where to go and I'll even label on the sheet, you should be three yards from the end man on the last scrimmage. 
Okay, so they know exactly where to go, and I put that time in on, on my own. It makes us much faster and more efficient in practice. You don't have the kid that usually probably has an IEP that doesn't know anything what's going on, but he looks at that sheet, he goes, I'm number two, I am in the backfield one by one. He knows exactly where to go. He's my formation group. Okay, we take advantage of it. Uh, one thing we picked up a couple years ago, uh, talking about um, scout team, how many of you guys offensively probably practice two minute drill stuff? I would assume, yeah? How many of you practice two minute stuff defensively? It, it can be hard at times, okay? Because that scout team's got to know their play before they come out. What we started doing is I'll have my defense huddle with me uh, about 10 yards, 15 yards from my scrimmage facing me. I'll have the scout team get up. The scout team will be set. They'll be ready to snap the ball. I'll tell them the play. They're going to turn around and run. Instantly, I recognize the formation, get in their stance, and I'll tell that scout team quarterback to snap it almost as soon as they get in their three points. Okay? So they have to all run and communicate simultaneously, get the check done within a couple of seconds. It's not, okay, here comes the scout team. All right, they're getting set up. And now we got time to adjust. They got to think fast. Okay, they got to adjust fast. We'll even do it where we'll start over maybe towards the sideline. Play finished by the sideline, running from the side quickly and adjust right away. Okay, making sure we're mentally there, we know what's going on, um, we're communicating with each other. Um, physical, you guys know, sometimes you got those kids that just don't want to play physical. Okay? For us, probably not going to be on the field. All right? For us, our physical thing is a mindset. Um, it's an attitude thing. We install it day one when we start in, of course, last year was July 31st, wasn't it, for equipment handout? I think it's even earlier this year. Okay? We install it right away. Um, it's from energy from our coaches. We emphasize the gets the fight. Your buddies are fighting over there. Why aren't you there helping them out? Okay? They, may got a, they may have a stud. In my mind, this is one of the best kids we played last year. Okay, quarterback of River Valley. He was a pain in the ass to try to handle. All right? We said if we have four guys, three guys at the fight, I'll take our three guys versus one of them any day of the week. You get to the fight. If your buddy's fighting, you better be there backing them up. You sprint. You get your pursuit lanes. I don't care who's in front of you. If we have more guys than they do, we will win that fight. All right? That's one thing we, we emphasize them right away. Get to the fight. You're all fighting together, 11 guys at one time. All right? Uh, physically, one thing that's really fortunate for us, we have an administration uh, that is in full support of off-season training for us. Uh, these are pictures from our summer lifting. Uh, we run three lifting sessions, uh, 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9 o'clock a.m., and we're on a 6 p.m. session on um, one evening. Um, and I would say our morning sessions are probably the most packed. The 6 a.m. and 7.30 are packed, okay? Um, and we, we usually have two people staffed to work it. Um, and there is paid positions for our summer program, um, which is really fortunate. Uh, we get a lot of guys there um, within those summer programs. Actually, we even get a lot of middle school kids showing up too. Um, if you can get the uh, volleyball coach, your girls cross country coach, your girls track coach, and bas girls basketball coach, you get their girls to show up, you guarantee your boys will follow. Okay? There's something there for them to look at while they're working out. All right? You get the girls there, the guys will follow. It usually works out. Um, we run pretty good in season programs, um, and we always emphasize uh, the three sport athletes. Uh, we want them doing something. If our football kids right now, I'll start talking with them this week. Um, if they're not out for baseball with Bird, um, they better be out for track with me. Right, they're doing something. This, I'm just going to go work out in the spring. No, we're all working out. We're all we're all active. We're three sport athletes. Our school is big enough to specialize. That's another issue as well. In my um, and Christ, they have fun with it. There's more 4.0s than you can imagine in that picture. And they had Thug Day one morning. Okay. And they all dressed like they're some gangsters and they struck some weird gang signs and took a picture. Okay. They have they they host their own little fun stuff. They have like uh, throwback days on some days and stuff, and they have fun with their summer programs. Um, but our numbers have been really good. Um, with the next year's got a brand new weight room and stuff, so hopefully it continues to increase. Um, as 
far as drills that we do during the season, talking about the physically fast thing, um, we do some open field stuff. The kind of was said earlier, uh, how much tackling, Xavier said he doesn't do much during, during the week. I would say we don't actually hit a lot during the week. We do some form tackling stuff, but it's the quickest list as you can imagine. Um, basic open field, the sideline drill, I refer to that as the Brady Willard quick drill. Um, we had a cornerback this year, could run down everybody. He was a podium guy, 300 hurdles. Um, his spatial recognition was quite bad at times. I don't know how many times he'd run down a kid and run right past him. Okay, so we worked the great little quick throw. Sideline, sideline's an All-American. Sideline never misses a tackle. Okay, if the sideline misses a tackle, I'll make sure that ref knows. <coughs> so basically it was just get out of the hip, sprint to get out of the hip from an angle, and just push him out of bounds. Okay, slow down, do whatever you gotta do, make that sideline make the tackle. Um, the dive and sweep the foot, uh, this is an all open field tackle that we worked on um, with my linebackers mostly. Greg, you want to come out here? This might be hard to see. No. So Greg was really fast, and I couldn't quite catch him. Okay, stop right there. We'll do that as a stationary drill. Uh, I'll have my linebacker basically in all fours. Okay, put your left foot forward. And I'll have him just sit here, and just on set hit, his job. We slide and slap the foot, okay? Because if he's running, what's that foot then going to do? Go behind the back one, trip him, he's on the ground, okay? And we'll make it more difficult, we'll, bump, we'll push him way back, because we're not going to practice running full speed and diving at people, okay? Well, again, we'll put him on all fours, hit the whistle, dump, jump, dive and slap the foot, okay? Get him on the ground, okay? Yeah, they got a big play, they got an open field, but we got him on the ground, we can line back up and we can, make, we can prevent him. Um, and obviously basic tackle stuff. We usually do tackle circuits, we do a right and start a team defense. We split our coaches up in about five groups. We're about a minute we run. Pretty quick. Bing, 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 get around, get up, be done. Um, or we'll do a, a turnover circuit, strip and recover. Um, basic stuff you guys have all done probably for. Ball carriers running, find the point, rip the point, <coughs> get on the ball, bring it back. We emphasize strip and recover all the time. I want my linebackers, my D-line and my DBs, that no matter for the first, second, third guy to tackle, the minute they feel the ball, it is instant, second nature, to instantly try to pull it. Okay? Get the ball on the ground. It shouldn't be like, oh, I'm here, oh, where's the ball, and then start going for it. As soon as they feel the tip, they're pulling it out. So we have muscle memory that constantly. So it's second nature during the games for them. Uh, basic recover the fumble stuff. Uh, this one's been kind of nice for us. Um, punt block. We'll actually practice uh, our punt block stuff during the week in our tech, in our turnover circuits. I forgot the stat I saw it once, but it was if a team that blocks a punt, their probability of winning the game skyrockets. Okay? Now if that block punt turns into a touchdown, it goes up even more. Some teams will maybe take all the time in the world develop these elaborate schemes, get all 10 guys moving around just to set up the pump block. We usually designate two guys. Last year was our Mike linebacker um, and our uh, outside linebacker. On punts, I told them, Cole, I said, Cole, you go watch Phil, I'll watch it too. You find the one guy in their punt team that you can take advantage of. Okay? If it's the right guard that doesn't move its feet. If it's the left tackle that comes in and he's a sophomore and all he is is on special teams. Okay? You go find that one guy that you think you can beat. And we'll set something up with just you and Ryan to go block the punt. Okay? We're going to come back out again. Thank you, move around. Um, with punt blocking, he's there. He's in my punt. <coughs> Two things I talk to those guys and work with them um, that are kind of designated as our blockers. Understanding is a right foot or left foot punter. Right foot apart. So if I'm starting on his right side, my aiming point is obviously his right foot. But if I'm on this side, I need to stay on this side the entire time if I'm rushing up the middle. Okay? I don't want this kid to cross his face because if you miss, your probability of running into him increases. Okay? You also see these guys that are also trying to block their punts way up here. It's not the way we teach it. Um, it's not the way we're coached in college either. I tell him his aiming point is he, we want him to block it off the foot 
with his hands crossed and low. Okay? So whatever we have set up, Cole gets free. His aiming point is going to stay on this side, hands down, hands crossed, block it, and run straight to the block point. Okay? If it's a do or die situation, we may tell him to leave the speed and go for it. Um, if it's on the other side and he's rushing from this side, say we have this right guard that we know we can take advantage of, same type of deal, but now we tell him, we'll tell him he has to cross the face. Obviously, he's right for the punt. He's got to get to the right side. So, same type of thing. We'll practice a drill. He'll rip or whatever, come through, run through the block point, hands down, watch it come off the foot, scoop and score type of deal. Hands crossed because if hands are here, obviously you can go straight through them. I hate watching them block, punt and go straight through a dude's hands because they weren't crossed. Okay, and cross the hands, there's no way it's going to go through um, for us. We do work some little bit of interception stuff, um, pretty basic, cut and throws. Not a big fan of the tip drill. Probability of someone tipping the ball and having to catch it doesn't happen a bunch. If you can't catch a ball, it's folded down back at you. It's too bad. Okay, we got some guys that probably can do that. We want kids with hands. Okay, our D linemen, we work a lot of screen stuff. Okay, read and react to the screen um, instead of trying to catch stuff in open field. Um, our discipline comes down to trust. Um, player to coach, coach to player. That player may trust me completely, but if I can't trust him completely, it's not going to work. Same thing goes the other direction. I may trust that player, but if he doesn't trust that I'm making the right calls, it's not going to work. <clears throat> There's many times where I, have to, I mean, as a coach, you've got to take ownership. They make a big play. Um, I'm thinking of, we, we played Oslo uh, week eight. They had a big play. Um, and they, they came off the sideline all frustrated. I said, I looked at them guys, those guys, that's on me. I had you in the wrong spot. I'm going to own up. That's on me. You guys did nothing wrong. All right? And that's big because they trust that, okay, I, I said, I'm going to make that change and we'll put that three technique up to a four eye if we have to. Okay? Taking ownership on it. Um, I meet with those kids a lot. Um, Fortunately, I do work at the high school. Um, so we have morning meetings. Um, I know those guys, I know they bring them on Saturday mornings and they watch film, kind of put it to bed right away on Saturday. Um, I usually meet with the defensive guys on Monday morning. Um, easiest way to get them there, tell them you're going to bring some donuts. You'll be surprised how fast they show up. Um, uh, during, during practice time, um, and it's just not talking about football. I want to get to know them. Okay? How your class is going? Okay? Uh, what's life at home? How's it, is everything okay? Okay, I want to get to know these guys and build that relationship between them and help strengthen that trust and helps them become more disciplined because we know whose job is whose and we're all going to come together with it. Um, go ahead, next one. Um, player to player stuff, uh, like Xavier Coach had said, um, I don't know how many times you say it throughout the year, do your job. Okay, you got to do your job. Every single player. If you're not doing your job, you're not going to have a job anymore. I tell them, if I come to school and I, I'm a science teacher, if I go to the wood shop and want to build a shed one day, they want the shed's going to suck because I'm trying to build it. Two, my principal's going to come down and fire my ass because I'm not hiring to do my science job. Okay? Same thing goes in the football field. Do your job every single play. Understand your teammate's job. My linebacker needs to understand what the three, uh, four eyes are supposed to do. My DN needs to understand what the linebacker behind him is going to do. Okay? Every person needs to have a full understanding of what the whole goal is as a group. We don't want them to specialize in, I'm just a corner, I'm just a man-to-man, -man, that's all I care about. Hell no. You got to know your run fit, you got to know the outside linebacker's run fit. One thing I tell, like my DN, our starting DN um, <coughs> probably could have gone and played D2, D1 if you wanted to, so try to play basketball now. Um, one of the smartest guys in the field, he, when I told him, because he first, he's like, why do I need to know what the outside backers do? Why do I need to know what the corners do? And I said, because if you're in that huddle and our outside backer gets injured, okay, and I got to send in the backup, might be a sophomore kid, it's the first time I ever stepped on a football field, who's going to help him out? There's no other outside linebacker there to help him. You got to be able to turn around and help communicate to him on where he might have to go. Okay? Because he's probably shit his pants because he's out of the field for the first time on a Friday night. Okay, so they all got to kind of figure it out and know it all together. These are our purposes. Um, 
And again, kind of know when, what, and why we do things. Um, why are we in a five fund? We will um, do a lot of, we'll jump into 40 fronts if we see a lot of spread teams. Then we saw about five or six, it seems to be the trend. I hear if I pop on film, my crisis is on our spread team. Hey, does anyone run the ball anymore? Um, there's four receivers all over the place, so we'll jump into a four, uh, four front. And I want those kids to know why we're doing what we're doing um, within those. Go ahead. All right, look at our geek. It's kind of what we do and what's worked for us um, with everything. Uh, we'll go D linemen, a little bit of our linebackers, and then our DBs as well. Go ahead and hit this one. Um, our D linemen, our D linemen are gap control. The picture here showing a four man front. This was us playing against a little shoot level four last year. Um, they were a spread team. We, we ran a little bit of a five front in the second half and we had to stop the run against them. Um, three staples that we put in the zone the importance of the feet, the importance of the hands, and the importance of the speed off the ball for them. Um, where do you coach at? Uh, North, Eau Claire. Eau Claire North? Oh, mother. So you? Yeah. Oh, man, used to work with you guys. He's trying to give you a people on salt all now. Okay, so who's your toughest competition? Uh, Menominee Chippewa. Okay, Menominee Chippewa. All week on their offense, they're running scout team. Every time they snap the ball, they're practicing one yard across the line of scrimmage. Okay, correct? Everyone. Your offense practices, you snap the ball, what do they do right away? So the week. They move the ball one yard across the line of scrimmage. Just by getting speed off the ball, if my V lineman can reestablish one yard in the other direction, we just screwed up everything they practiced all week. Because all week they practiced going one yard forward. You get them going one yard back, you instantly screw everything that they did practice timing wise. Because now they're doing something that they didn't do all week. Our line never practices, okay, this play, guys, I want you to take a step back one yard. All right? I don't think we pass pro ever. Okay? So we really work on that. This is what the importance of the feet when we picked up a couple years ago watching the film. Um, we see a decent amount of option teams and a decent amount of trap stuff. Um, our D linemen, DNs, which are stand up, our TNT, our tackle nose tackle, whichever side of the ball they are, we emphasize that your inside foot has to be forward. Okay? So DNs, Right side of the ball, left foot must be forward. If you're a tackle on a three or a four eye, your left foot must be forward. Same thing on the other side, projectors ball, I'm over here on this side, my right foot has to be forward. Here was the reason for that. Obviously, his first step is gonna be back foot coming forward, okay? If he's unblocked, all right, so he knows he's either getting trapped or he's gonna have to close on the full back. He must pivot on that foot instantly and automatically close, okay? So it's a one step. I'm across the line, I'm unblocked, I'm redirecting and closing. <coughs> if he switches his feet, okay, now I step right, how the hell am I gonna go that way? I gotta take another step, and then I gotta go. I gave myself a bonus step, it's all about time. Do I take two steps or one step, what's faster, all right? Chris Madison's in the wrong stance. <coughs> go figure, okay? Dr. J with his club, <clears throat> had two pins put in his finger, he's actually in the right spot. I wish you guys could all have a conversation with Dr. J. No. <laughs> Dr. J broke his finger against Osceola, right? Had surgery on Monday, right? Yeah. Had two, three pins put in? Yeah. Okay. Didn't practice Tuesday, leading up to 12 4. Practiced Wednesday, I think. Wednesday to practice, we're like, hey, Dr. J, how's the finger feel? Oh, it feels like I got some pins through it. <laughs> you do, Dr. J. You got three of them. Okay. Um, a college recruiter even called me the other day. He goes, a good buddy went from college. He goes, we just had Dr. J in our office. Is he? Yeah. That's <laughs> Dr. J. Okay, we just want to make sure. He'll play his ass off for you, but he's a different dude. Um, hands, again, Doc's got it good. We want those hands out in front, okay? Chris, again, we gotta kick him in the ass. We wanna see that left hand out in front. Because where's it gotta go anyway to engage the lineman? It's, it's gotta go there right away anyway. So why bring it from the hip? You better as well get it already in front. We preach flat back, high hands, <coughs> engage, pad level, stay low and drive. Hands above the face, okay? Engage the hands, drive, and react, all right? 
Um, go ahead and hit it. All right, our TNT. So we basically break our alignment into two groups. Our tackle most tackle, work with Bird. Our DNs usually work with Coach Hook. Um, one thing that Bird had picked up a couple of years ago, um, we got some nice single man drive sleds. He throws some 45 points and stuff on them. Working on pad level and staying low. Um, he makes them drive the sleds underneath the chutes. Okay, down and back, down and back, staying underneath the chutes the entire time. Working on pad level, flat back, engaging the hands, keeping the hands engaged, keeping separation the entire time. Um, to redirect and close, we'll do a simple one-on-one -on -one drill. Again, with the back foot forward, maybe alignment in front. If he engages, he's got to engage and drive his hands and run his feet. Okay? If he completely avoids him, again, one step. He's got to plant on that foot. He's got to redirect now. Okay? Because if you go two or three, that track block creates a big hole. If you go two or three, that quarterback's giving it to the fullback and he's already passed you. Okay, so we work quickness with the redirect a lot um, with them. Uh, our DNs, um, with our hands on and squeeze, um, D, Coach D works with them a bunch. Um, dip, whip, and run is another thing. Can you come out here again? Um, so our DNs are usually stand up guys. Um, they got to be studs for us. 6'4, um, I don't know how big he was. He's never going to make a sack in his life, but he can close out a kicking up tackle pretty easily. Condor arms up there on the top. Um, one of the best ones we've had, state finals in the triple, you know, then 110 hurdles made second. So anyway, um, if he's my DN, or I'm the DN, and he's my tackle, okay? Their job, obviously, outside, inside foot's forward. I'll go this way so you, once you guys can see me. Okay, switch his stance. Yeah. Okay? We teach them wrestle half the bear, all right? I'm not gonna engage the whole body and wrestle the entire bear, all right? I'm gonna wrestle half the man. Okay, much easier to wrestle, wrestle half the bear and the whole bear. All right? So his job is hands on and to keep half the bear, keep separation. That's what we like next big tall guys, they have big long arms that are 50 in front. Okay? If he down blocks, his job is as best as he can to keep his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, hands on, and squeeze. Stay ass to ass, all the way down the line. Because if he's got a kick out coming, he can instantly hit it with the inside arm, shoulder square. Keep your outside arm free. If he's being red, he can still keep his shoulder square. It's a much harder read. Whereas if he turns and goes, that's an easy read for a quarterback. Okay, so he's keeping his shoulder square. If he gets a reach block, he's obviously fighting like hell to keep the outside. If he can't, we preach dip, rip, and run. <clears throat> he's going to rip here, and he's going to throw the arm through and try to fight to keep the edge and not just run laterally, he's told to push into the backfield as he does it. It's our linebacker's job to then read that and know where to fit as an alley run. Okay? And they work those two things constantly. Um, I know DeSalvo works with those DNs a bunch as well. It's hands on and squeeze, it's dip, rip, and run, it's lock out every day of practice with those guys. I'm um, going to hit it. Um, linebackers, this is my, this is my passion, this is my group. Um, to emphasize two things, they are reading react. Um, I want to say in the 14 games we played, right, last year, I maybe called three pluses the entire season. Okay? And that was in the state finals because we couldn't get to Elijah Hall. We get him on the ground. All right, so we had to start sending pressure because he was chucking the pigskin all over the damn field. All right, in the second half. Um, we emphasize play side versus BCR. BCR stands for boot, cut back, reverse. Okay, my play side guys are full flow and going. If you're on the back side, you're never gonna make the play on the sideline over there. You better stay disciplined, show the square, and be my boot, cut back, reverse guy on the back side. Okay, they're usually reading near back or whatever the scout report tells them to read. Um, and like everything else, they must understand the importance of offense. We do intense film study. We watch it all the time. Um, we get purpose out of it, uh, and we want we want them to know where their read is and where they're supposed to fit. Go ahead. All right, we break it down three ways. I have them. I have my linebackers usually wearing a 53 or a 52 most of the time. They're reading most of the time it's in your back, and they got to see the guard with their peripheral vision. I had a, I had a sophomore this year. He had a hard time doing it. 
and he was, he was fresh, he was new. But he's slowly figured it out. Our run fits are level one, guards, level twos, tackle the tight end, level three, go to the sideline. All right? BCR, we'll talk about those. Virgo, I'll step back out again and give you an exercise. Okay? So what we do, we do this every day as linebackers. So if he's the running back, you can stop right there. We're going to get in our stance. And if he's just going to take a step one direction or the other, that would be step replace. Okay? We'll load it back up. He'll take a step, step replace. And I want to see all my linebackers at the same time going boom, boom. Okay? Boom, boom. Step replace, step replace. So if he goes that way and my read steps are opposite, I'm already two yards behind. All right, so we, we do reps of level two, level three, level one reads every day at practice. They get sick of it, okay? So if he does more of a level two read, I'm still doing step, step, and I'm reading reacting. If he turns his shoulders and goes, I'm level three, I'm turning and running, but I'm still trying to keep my shoulders square, reading his backside hip the entire time. I prevent the cutback. So eventually, who are we gonna run into? The All-American on the sideline who never misses the tackle. All right? You go ahead and hit the next one. Well, I'll show you a clip. I'll show you the VCR ones in a little bit. Go ahead. <coughs> All right, so this is our practice film um, that we break down. This was uh, the week this practice. <coughs> our backers were reading Elijah. They were reading all because he was the man for them. Um, play side. So right now, we had level two steps. Run, read, down, run, read, down. Looking for the open window. Open window, window opens, they close it. All right? My VCR guys, the backside, they're slow. Boot cut back reverse. I get my backside on my outside linebacker. Essentially, his read is um, basically not crossing the center's nose. Okay? Constantly looking for boot cut back reverse. Our backside DN, just like we did earlier, he's shuffling down, keeping shoulders square the entire time. Constantly looking for boot cut back reverse coming back to the direction. Okay? They are never going to make the play on the front side. And I tell them that all the time. You are not supposed to sprint there. They will never make that play. You sit back home and you understand your job. Tune in twice. Alright? So here would be an example. We get full flow. You see our guys need to see and understand the counter coming back. Wrong arm hit or squeezing straight down with the inside shoulder. They're sitting on that beach on the back side. These guys play side are trying to close open windows, but I expect those two to be able to see that out of this peripheral. This kid saw it really well. That's why I signed with Duluth the other day. Okay? Sophomore, took him a little longer to figure out, he eventually got there. Um, but they gotta see it, although they're reading the backs, so they can't see the guards, it's gonna be a long day. Ten minutes, coach. All right, thanks. Um, skate to play side. Another quick one we do. Um, Bird, come back out again. We're going to fly through this a little bit quick. If your linebackers don't know who is supposed to block them each play, they're probably going to get blocked. That's part of our film study. Yeah, you know where the ball is going. I guarantee that offense drew someone up to block you. you got to know who's supposed to block you on a given play. So we work with uh, well, the play I'll show you. Our inside linebacker knew when Somerset opened up one direction that he'll probably get he'll probably get veered down by the tackle or the tight end. Okay? So we work all the time. He comes to clear down, we'll engage, lock out, skate over the top, finish hip to hip, ass to ass. If I finish out here, <coughs> two-way go. I finish nice and tight, where's that running back got to go? I forced him one direction. Okay? Go ahead, thank you. So you can see here, Cole knew exactly. He watched more film maybe than I did. All right? He knew if they opened up this way, this kid was most likely in charge of blocking. Okay? He knew that through watching film. He knew that through the scouting reports we gave him. Okay, hit the next one. He takes his eyes off what's going to be happening. He takes his eyes to actually who's supposed to block him. Okay, the next one. Go back, sorry. I can emphasize that I have a VCR guys on the back side. Keeping shoulders square, shuffling, shuffling down the line of scrimmage. They're not looking for play side, they're looking for boot, cut back, reverse. That's all their job is back side. Next one. Engage, hands up, locked out, skating over the top, because he knows his buddy's coming, and he knows if he tries to cut back, he's got his BCR guys on the back side. 
If he gets to his shoulder and seals him, there's no one there. Okay? He skates, force it back to your other inside back. That's what it came down to. Okay? We'll keep going. We'll skip. All right. Level three pass. We gotta get some All right. Like I said, we're man to man, guys. Uh, we emphasize it all the time. Uh, our corners, the state finals last year, we had five DBs that probably had no right being DBs in a state final game. Okay? Luke Roll played his ass off. He was a scout team All American for two years for us, finally worked into a starting job. He would do his best on scout team sophomore for junior year. He would know what the play was and purpose and try to be intercepted before we, it even happened. Okay? He worked his way into starting spot plays. Uh, other corner, fast as hell, spatial recognition was kind of tough. <clears throat> then we had two sophomores and an ex D lineman play, covering the slot. Okay? But they knew man to man, if my guy went somewhere, I went with him. We emphasize, and again, film study. Understanding if they're a primary force, help them set the edge with the DNs, or if they're alley runners, or an inside out, stay on the backside hip is what it comes down to for them. Next one. Stuff they work on every day. Um, inside hand punch, easy stuff. We deny the slant, slant's an easy pass, throw the ball over the top, it's a lot harder. Okay, inside hand punch, stone wall at the line of scrimmage, force them to the outside, move the feet. Okay, you just can't throw the hand, they got to move the feet. We refer to it as in phase and not in phase in man coverage. Once the guy gets engaged in his route, they're all focused on the hip, eyes on the hip. If you're in phase, meaning you can touch the hip, once the ball's there, you can actually look and deflect. If you're not in phase and you can't touch the hip, you're never allowed to look back. One, you're not close enough to even cause a pass interference. Two, if you can't touch the hip, with many you look back, you lose them, okay? If I'm in phase and I can touch the hip, I look back now, I still know where he is, okay? Then we emphasize break the arms. Um, the slide before I uh, mentioned how I played love the kid. I played his annoyance to his benefit in this game, okay? He was that student in class that wouldn't shut up the entire time, okay? I told Luke, I said, we're gonna put you on our best kid, okay? Their top wideout just signed with North Dakota last week. Um, we told Luke, if he steps across the line of scrimmage, you are on his hip. That's if the play is going or if the play is not going. If the play was done, you are going to walk next to him, hip to hip, until you reach the line of scrimmage. He's going to go to his huddle, you're going to go back to your huddle. Because we wanted those kids to know if they were on our side of the ball, there was going to be someone right next to him the entire time as wideouts. Quite honestly, I thought he was going to forget my game night. We come back on Monday morning, my counselor comes to me, he goes, what the hell was Luke Roll doing the entire game? He goes, he like kept following that kid even when the play wasn't going on. I'm like, holy shit, he actually did. Okay. <laughs> but he mentally, the idea was mentally wear him down that if he was on our side of the ball, he wasn't going to be alone. Okay, there was going to be someone with him the entire time. Um, which maybe it worked, maybe it didn't, but didn't open anything that he does not. Next one. Okay. Real quick, I'll throw what we do weekly. Um, Saturdays and Sundays to me, I do the game plan stuff. I tell the kids to kind of take a break. They do watch film Saturday morning. Monday we install game plan. Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday we practice. Thursday we do a little walk through Friday for us to consider a showtime. Go. Okay. Like I said to me, film is sex. You never have much. You never have too much. Obviously for us, I think it's guaranteed two games we get from people. Um, that's never enough for me. I will search anywhere to find whatever I can get. Okay, I urge you guys, if, you, if you're looking for it, you'll find it. Um, Max Preps, YouTube, kids these days edit, tweet, post, whatever they want. Most of their stuff is public. You can find highlight, to, highlight films of their entire season. Okay? Because those are their big plays. When it comes down to it in the game, where are they going to go to? They're big plays. Okay? The team we played from uh, Missouri last year, they didn't want to trade film with us. That's okay, I found your entire last season online. I already filmed it on my computer and broke it down, it's already gonna help. Thank you. Okay. Um, from that, we did, I developed a game plan, we looked at the tendencies, 
Actually, through the weekend, sometimes I'd even be messaging and talking to my inside linebacker, Cole, um, asking him questions. I knew the answer was, I just wanted him to think. He said, Cole, if they, if they, if they do this, what do you think we're going to do? We'll move him to a, a two or a four. I said, yeah, that's right. Okay. I wanted him to understand what's going on in front of him, and I'd be questioning him the entire time. Go. Okay. I want to get kids to film in the morning and drink donuts. Okay. I'll even cook up some eggs in the morning. If they're really lucky, I'll bring some bacon. Okay. Line will come real quick. Then. All right. Um, I hand out a game plan for them on Monday mornings from the stuff I do over the weekend. Our game plan pretty much looks up just like that. Um, it'll have their top formations and the tendencies within these formations. Okay. It'll have our checks and adjustments. It'll have our weekly goals. On the back side, I usually write down their four top plays which most of the time, the teams that we play, their four top plays are about 80% of their offense. And I draw exactly how I anticipate them blocking us. So my inside linebacker, my outside linebacker, they know if we see a kick out, who's coming for them. There's someone drawn up to come from, you better know who it is. All right? And we'll talk about weekly goals. Practice on Monday for us. Formation adjustment, checks, knowing what we're going to do, where we're going to line up. Basically install basics right away. Okay, next one. Our Tuesday, um, I have film with them on Monday, on, on every morning. If I have a teacher meetings or whatever, I just have it queued up in my room ready to play. Um, if there's notes from the practice before, I already have the notes saved. I just say, hey guys, come in, hit play, go through the notes, and see how the practice field. Okay, it's really easy. I don't then expect them to watch it on their own. It's 10 or 15 minutes before the bell rings before first out for us. Okay, it's real quick and easy. Um, and again, it's one of those times where I can talk to the guys and get to know them, develop that relationship, develop that connection with them, that trust between player and coach. Practice, indie time, if it's a spread team, we'll devote some time to seven on seven. If it's a main run team, we'll maybe devote some time to inside run fits. Um, during our team defense, again, we do the two, film, the two groups. We do a play group, we do a formation group. Again, spending time on the play cards, numbering people, actually identifying on a spread team, I'll even write on an out, I'll write five yards and then out. I was tired of seeing 15 yard bananas on a five yard out. But if it's actually written on the card, the kid knows where to go. It takes me a couple more minutes, but it saves me one hell of a headache at practice. Because the kid knows where his cut's supposed to be. Um, seeing wheel routes that look like dawns. Okay? Some of you guys who are laughing probably know exactly what I mean. Um, and then a formation group, and we film it. I may play it for them to watch it, or I might just be watching it myself, and I'll learn from it. Go. Thursday, pretty simple. We don't do any indie to walk through for us. It's just tops. Um, our main goal as a defense for Thursdays is clear minds. If you have any more questions, you better ask them. I almost pulled, pulled my hair up a couple uh, weeks. Friday morning, or Friday, a couple hours before the game, I got my outside linebacker asking me a couple questions on a couple checks. I said, dude, we're going to play in like an hour. Ask this on Thursday or on Wednesday. Okay? Have a clear mind by the time we get there. All right? Next one. Um, on Fridays, the biggest thing, Turk, who I work closely, is our basically one of our big D guys as well. He usually calls me down most of the time. Because if they do something like shit, we gotta adjust. He goes, no. We're fine. We don't need to adjust. We worked on it all week. We just gotta play better. Okay? The kid's there, he just didn't make a play. Okay, so instead of doing quick adjustments, it's no, we're fine. Trust the game plan, play better, is what we'll talk to. If you don't have Huddle Sideline, where it's the first year we had it, I said, that was a couple games in my mind. Okay? We have one freshman that's designated to hold our place on our uh, field. Um, iPad. If I'm on, we're on defense, he hands it to Bird. For an offense, he brings it over to me. Um, our D court, our other D guy that's up in the box, is watching around his um, his phone the entire time. We're checking plays, we're marking plays. A lot of times, I have freshmen um, that have formation charts or playing charts, and they're marking just simple stuff of right or left on third or whatever downs. So we can start to pick up tendencies within the game as well. I'm um, just basic basic stuff. Um, Halftime questions, we always meet, we talk to each other. What's working for us, what's working for them? 
but it's not working. Okay? What do we expect to happen in the second half? Do we actually need to adjust at this time? Okay? Usually we like to show our kids a lot of the clips from first half during halftime when there's a little more time because we're playing both sides of the ball, starting to talk to the kids around the field, and we'll show them the clips and we'll talk about adjustments then. Okay? If we do have time during timeouts, we do show them the, the best we can. Um, I don't think I could ever coach without that whole sideline now. It's, it's awesome. Love it. Two minutes, Whatever Coach. System you guys use. Two minutes, Coach. Okay. <laughs> um, I know I went fast. Do you guys have any questions? Some of the stuff that we do. So it's work for us. If you're a four-man front, five-man front, we usually run a lot of both now as well as spread teams. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we talked about doing a lot of uh, inside, inside hand press. <laughs> Uh, much rather with the D-back. Yep. Are you doing a lot of uh, pressing at the line? Uh, most of the time, yes. Um, we'll talk to the DBs. A lot of times it's game plan stuff. Uh, we, we stuff. So what we prefer is, yeah, we're at the line of scrimmage, we're inside hand punch. Luke actually had called off sides a couple times this year because he was covering a slot receiver, not the end receiver, and didn't realize he was in the neutral zone. Uh, uh, game plan lines, if we see, we had a couple teams last year that we knew they didn't throw slants, they threw a ton of fades. So we actually backed them off, maybe two yards or something outside shade. We were still man to man, we were still all over them. But now we said, outside linebackers, you better come help out on the slants. Yeah, we're, wherever they go, we go. Inside hand, in the pocket. And the refs at Camp Brown was here telling us that we were too physical with the wide receivers just because their sidelines were bitching. Sorry for anybody who's um, But we tell our DBs, once you start, once you get that punch, once you're engaged running with it, we want him to run and rip into his arm the entire time and continue to push to the sidelines. Okay? I don't want to see any gap between the hips. Because one, it's going to slow him down because he's got to run with some more in his arm the entire time. Um, two, it's slowly getting him off this route, pushes to the sidelines the entire time. Um, we were told we're getting too handsy and too physical with the guys past the line of scrimmage. I said, well, if you're not going to throw a flag, I'm not going to change. Okay. And he kind of smiled and kind of <coughs> so, We're physical in how And we do it usually on an island. <laughs> Unless a lot of people will put free safety on top of So if you have uh, an outside guy really pressing there, how far off are you when the inside guys? Uh, we tell them if they're if they're close enough where they feel there could be pick routes, they have to be on two different levels. If they're far enough apart where Turp usually gives them like a six to seven yard range, if they're far enough apart, we'll fire across the balls. Otherwise, we just say you guys got to be on two different levels. If we know there's one guy that we want to press all the time, no matter what, we'll always make sure he's on the line, the other one's off. Otherwise, we say okay, corner, you're more comfortable pressing drop off that, that slot receiver. Um, so a lot of it comes out of communication between them on the field. If we see bunch stuff, there are a few times where we'll do some porch checks where we may just press the front guy and maybe do what we call an IO coverage. You take the outbreak, you take the deep break um, because then you're picking yourself as bunch stuff. Um, so we do a little bit of a zone kind of bunch stuff. Um, <coughs> we're all on. Any others? You guys have any questions at all? You can find me, I'll be here till about, I gotta leave at lunch. I got a four year old nephew for a party to go to. Um, so, find me, ask me if you don't want to ask now. So, thanks guys. Thank